Okay, so we're just going to go through some of the daily and weekly article checklists we have to do. At the start of the day, we need to tick to say that we've checked the rubber door seal, the chamber and shelves are checked for cleanliness and debris, the reservoirs filled with fresh RO water, the machines are turned on and their screens are illuminated. Underneath, you'll see a table. This is basically completed from the uh, data logger. We just need to put a date in on the left hand side and a tick to say that the data logger is uh, switched on. Mainly that's just making sure that there's a compact flashcard in the back, but they, sh they should always be there. On the reverse of the sheet, you'll see something called a steam penetration test. The steam penetration test basically needs to be done once daily, and that's basically using a little device which checks to make sure the vacuum part of the autoclave is functioning correctly. So we basically need to take one of these little strips, we need to fold it in half. Ideally, it's good to leave the little tag just a little bit long on this side. That's just going to make it easier to get it out of the actual device once it's been through the cycle. We're also going to need the Helix device as well. And with the Helix device, we just need to remove this tip, the little paper strip goes inside of here and this is then going to get securely screwed on basically onto here. Just have to pop the camera down just while I just do that. <laughs> So the little TFT strip is now securely inside the helix. Now, the way this works is basically the little blue bit is sealed and the only way for the steam to get to that TFT strip is through this long coil. Now in the long coil, there's a little opening just here. So the vacuum basically pulls out all of the air that's in there. And then once the air's pulled out, the steam can then rush in and then basically uh, change the color of the strip. Now, now we've loaded this, we can then pop it into the autoclave. Okay, so now that we've loaded the coil of the little TFT strip in the end, we're just going to bob that into the autoclave. We're going to close the autoclave door. Okay, then we need to select a cycle which runs on a vacuum cycle. Now that could either be the Universal Program or the Quick Program B. It wouldn't be the Quick Program S because this is a non-vacuum cycle. So we'd select this one or this one. For the sake of the demonstration, we're going to pretend the cycle is fully run now. We're going to let the cycle finish, <laughs> door open. We'll very carefully cut this out because it's going to be hot. And then, then what we need to do is very carefully just unscrew the little cap. Now leaving that little tag just a little bit long just helps this now because you can grab it. And when we take this little tab out, this should have changed to a light green colour. If it's not changed to a light green colour, the vacuum test has failed. And obviously you need to let myself or uh, Nicola know this. Perfect. Once we've done that, we would take the little strip and we would securely tape it to the day that basically is tested on. Um, the batch number is located on the little strip. They haven't actually got an expiry date, these ones. We basically pop that it's passed or failed, and basically who's tested it. End of day, we just need to record down that the reservoir has been drained and flushed with fresh RO water. The autoclave needs to be clean, the door needs to be left open, and the machine needs to be... When it comes to the bottom sheet, there's a few little bits here to tick off. Now, one of the ones is here is a vacuum test. Now, with the vacuum test, this is not a sterilization cycle, so no instruments must be in there. We go to the next on the screen, we click vacuum test and press the start button. This will basically complete the cycle and either give a success or failure. Once it's done that, basically you just need to complete the little form at the bottom. So on here we need a date, we need to say the door seal has been inspected and the closed door interlock and the pressure lock is kind of the same thing, that's just basically how the, the uh, autoclave uh, is locked down, that's automatic. The automatic control test is actually controlled by the data loggers and that'll be read later. Um, we've got the vacuum test, which we're going to take whether it's passed or failed. And the steam penetration tests are basically based on the TFT strips above.